Hello everybody and welcome to the approximate analysis for indeterminate beams and frames. Uh, prior to the prior uh, prior to performing the complete analysis of an indeterminate structure, it is necessary to estimate the proportions of its members in order to know the relative stiffness upon which analysis depends. These dimensions can be obtained in the basis of approximate analysis using the uh, point of inflection. The point of inflection is right shown right here. And let's go to that later on. Uh, the point of inflection is known to be at a distance of point uh, 0 0.211 times the span L of the structure from the face of the support. And that is where the bending moment is zero and therefore hinges can be placed at the exact location of all the inflection points of the indeterminate structure. For, for uh, structures of minor importance it is often satisfactory to design on the basis of results obtained by a rough calculation such as this using this method, the approximate method of analysis. Here's the uh, Here's the complete diagram for the, uh, the approximate, approximate method of analysis using inflection points. Uh, this, uh, this is the uh, indeterminate beam, uh, for sure. These, uh, these both ends are fixed. If you have a continuous beam and you analyze one span, the, uh, that beam is considered indeterminate beam and both ends are fixed such as this one here and to find the uh, to determine the shear and moments for the beam with a uniform load like this uniform distributed load uh, we can use this uh, approximate method of analysis uh, first you gotta draw the line uh, the imaginary line for the deflection of the beam uh, this is this is how the beam deflected after the uh, when the load when the load is applied, so these are the dust line, the line of deflection. Uh, along that line of deflection, you have to locate the uh, point of inflection. The point of the point of inflection is is found to be 0 0.211 times the span. And same true with the other side of the other end of the beam. <coughs> At the inflection point, the uh, the bending moment is considered to be zero. So therefore, we can place the the hinge there, and from that hinge of at the inflection point, we can that is where we can break the beam apart like this one here, and to analyze it. Uh, breaking the, the beam apart, separating both uh, ends from the, the mid span of the beam, and and we can analyze this as a static of equilibrium. This is a static of equilibrium because at the point of inflection, when you separate the beam, there's uh, when you break the beam, it's, it's the breaking portion of the beam because of the shear. And the shear value there is two point is is point two eight nine times the uniformly load distributed load times the span, and the shear is represented with two arrows, one downward and one upward. And since the error, <coughs> since this beam is in one, when you break it there, so therefore the shear here from the separated portion of the beam is also equal to the shear in the mid span of the beam and uh, same true with the, the other end 
The shear value layers are equal. They are a symmetrical loading, the uniformly distributed load. And the both uh, at the inflection point, the shear is is both and um, found to be 0.289 WL. That's the value of the shear. <coughs> and and because of that shear, the moment, the moment calculation and value for the the moment at the end of the beam, the end support of the beam, both supports they're the same, is calculated, the moment is calculated to be um, point, it's a point zero eight three three W L square. And same as the other side of the beam. That is the, the moment value. See the separation there, if you put it together you can see the the moment diagram of the beam. This is how the moment diagram of the fixed end uh, beam in the terminate structure. <coughs> Here's a shear force and moment here in the end, <coughs> right here. <coughs> so that's how the, uh, the values of moment and shear for the using approximate method and now let's go to the uh, okay this is the comparison between the approximate method and the formula uh, WL square over 12 to find the maximum moment this formula finds the maximum moment of the indeterminate beam like this where both ends are fixed okay you can apply that formula you get the same Okay, uh, suppose we have uniformly distributed load of 50 kN per meter and the span of beam is 6 meter. Now, uh, number one, applying the approximate method solve for shear and moments. <laughs> the WL square doesn't give you the shear, it gives you the maximum moment, but it doesn't give you where the location of the moments are. Okay, so now see let's, in applying the approximate method it says a moment at the support so we know that the moment is at the support is given as point zero eight three three w l square so substitute the values of w and l we get point point zero eight three three times fifty the uniformly distributed load times the span twice that because it's a square uh, gives you 150 kilonewton meter. Okay, that's the uh, the support moment right here, same as that one shown here. Okay, now that's the support moment. Both supports are the same, so it has uh, 150 kilonewton uh, meter. Now at the at the center of the beam, the mid span. The mid span beam is given as the moment of the mid span is giving us 0 0.0417 WL square as well so substitute the values of W and the L gives you 0 0.0417 times 50 times 6 and times 6 is 75 kilonewton meter see the mid span has smaller moment and both support has the maximum moment now there's a shear, a maximum shear, the most critical shear of any horizontal structural member is, is located in a very small approximate distance from the support. So this is, this is real, this is real uh, critical shear. <laughs> uh, okay, now the maximum shear is calculated to be 0 0.89, 0 0.289 times the uniform load times the span. Substitute the value again. This gives you 2.89 times 50 times 6. The sh critical share, this is called the critical share of all, is 86.87. This is important when you design a beam using maximum moment, you still have to, uh, to check your beam whether or not is capable of carrying the shear force which is this one here the critical 
the, the beauty about the approximate method it will give you the the critical share with this which is really important in, in designing beams and the critical share here is located is calculated to be 0.89 times 50 times 6 at a distance of 0.211 times L from the support of the beam. This is really good. <clears throat> so the shear is at 6.7 kN. The uh, mid span moment is being 5 and the su both supports uh, moment is 150 kN meter. Now let's get to the WL square over 12. Uh, the same load 50 kN, the span over L, substitute the value uh, from WL square over 12 formula, 50 times 6 and times 6 again. You multiply all this together divided by 12, it gives you the same 150 kN, the maximum moment. It gives you the maximum moment, but it doesn't tell you where the moments are occurring. And uh, whereas this approximate method, it is clearly uh, known to to have the maximum moment occurring at the both ends of the beam because they are fixed. When you design a continuous beam, each span of the beam is considered to be fixed doesn't matter how much span you have, maybe 10 spans, 8 spans, 5 spans. Each segment of the beam are considered to be fixed and therefore you can't apply this. If it's a uniformly distributed load, you can't apply the approximate method. It's more clearer than the WL square over 12. Alright, so that's the, uh, the importance of the approximate method in determining the indeterminate Determinate structure using inflection points. There are two inflection points for this beam, and so the the book uh, uh, gives you the same um, amount of maximum moment, but the WL squared doesn't detail uh, give you the details of where and what, like the shear and where are the moments. All right, so that's the end of the video and. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for thank you for watching. Bye.